And this question says, um, <clears throat> dear Helen, thank you so much for all you continue to do to help so many of us and so lovingly. My question is around something you have no doubt answered many times before. I'm currently experiencing a huge amount of turbulence in my awakening process. The seeing of my true nature as permanent awareness has been happening with increasing frequency and more clearly each time. However, at the same time, I am experiencing huge amounts of despair and emptiness. It's like all the juice has gone out of my life. The awareness somehow feels devoid of any substance or any meaning. It's easy for everything to feel meaningless. This constant yo-yoing between clarity and turmoil is becoming very exhausting. And I often find myself just wanting it all to stop. When does all this come to an end? Is there anything you would recommend I do? With deep, heartfelt thanks and love. So um, I would, uh, I'm going to answer this, address this in a general way, but I'd also ask if you have time to watch the uh, session I did last night on Awakening Together, because I also addressed a lot of my own journey through that particular process too. And um, that might be helpful to, uh, to look at that also. Um, so the yo-yoing that you were talking about between this clarity and this um, utter confusion and despair, I think that is pretty much one of the worst places to find ourselves in the middle of our awakening process, so to speak. After a seeing or seeings, no matter how deep or not they have been, we are changed, we are shifted on some level and our old perspective, the way that we used to look at ourselves, the world, um, everyone else in our life is going to be that much more out of alignment with what we have seen ourselves to be. So even if that's only uh, currently a theoretical understanding, even if you haven't experientially realized the truth at all yet, this will still be what's going on for you. What you know to be true is becoming so uh, clearly different to what we thought was true about ourselves. And this is why this yo-yoing, this discord, this increasing gap between uh, what I know myself to be and what I uh, keep experiencing in my old way. And this despair and this uh, hopelessness, uh, those were words I used on that session last night too. And it, the person that sent this question in obviously has had a deeper seeing, but this was already happening to me after I'd even begun to realize that there was something called awakening to, uh, I'm going to use the word achieve, but it's not, not an achievement, but I don't have any other suitable word right now, that there was something to uh, aim for, to understand, to realize uh, I was already feeling the same way, very polarized experience. And it started off as half and half. Half the time I felt open, peaceful, light, free. Um, and like there could never be anything wrong with me or the world or anything like that. And then the other half of the time, feeling that everything was wrong with me and everything was wrong with the world and that I couldn't even remember a time uh, where it felt true that the, the opposite, where, where it felt... I was stuck in this dark corner of my own consciousness and just could not break out. So what's happening there? It, when we look at that, we can begin to understand it. That's how we begin to move beyond it. So we said many times, it's our old thought processes coming to the surface in contrast to now uh, to be examined against what we've seen to be true, that I'm infinite, formless everywhere, that there are no other beings that everything I see and experience, everything that exists is my own self, the self, the supreme being, the one consciousness. But we can maybe come to see that also still functioning is this egoic sense of self, this separate sense of self, 
that's kind of running on its own momentum. And its momentum is trying to get somewhere, trying to get to uh, a place where it feels better, where everything makes sense. And uh, more and more as we see the truth of our real being, that we already are that and could never not be that, which is everywhere, formless, including all of this, appearing as all of this. Then this mechanism of forward motion to try to get somewhere where everything makes sense, where I feel okay, where I feel safe, where I feel loved, lovable, all of that, begins to make less and less sense to keep traveling. So what remains of our egoic sense of self is becoming more disillusioned, more disheartened, more uh, with a sense that life is meaningless, purposeless, all of that. So there's this, everything's okay exactly as it is and never has anything or could be wrong. And then this, it's pointless. There is no hope. There is no um, point in even trying to move forward. And yet all this egoic sense of self can do is try to move towards some future moment where it feels it will be happier than it is now. So just understanding where this despair comes from, this really uh, intense, um, everything that the egoic sense of self thought to be true, which we did previously think was us, is being torn apart. That awakening, that happiness, that freedom is in some future moment, which is the reason for all of its um, forward momentum becomes clear that happiness is available now in this moment. And all it can do is try to move away from this moment, this separate sense of self. So from its perspective, it feels totally useless, irrelevant, uh, unloved, unwanted, all of those feelings. So here's where this kind of dark um, despair, these heavy energies come from, this meaningless uh, meaninglessness that begins to what's the point and I remember voicing clearly these words what's the point of coming to satsang what's the point of meditating what's the point of doing any self-inquiry if it's not going to get me anywhere there's this egoic voice what have I spent the last um, at that point for me 20 21 22 years doing actually if there's nowhere I can get to, and this was in such a stark contrast to this, knowing that I never left home, ever. That all of my practice, all of my seeing, all of my inquiry, all of my meditation, every single satsang I'd ever watched had been to see clear where I already am and could not uh, move away from. So just understanding why this uh, polarity seems to exist, it begins to allow it to dissolve. If you've believed something to be true your entire life, <clears throat> you know, a whole, this whole human incarnation and many incarnations before, many bodies have come and gone before you got to this point. And for that whole time, you've believed that you were separate, and that you were personally responsible for finding your own happiness, your own peace, your own freedom. And that the way to do that was to move towards some future moment away from where you are now in this, I'm going to get there eventually mechanism. And to suddenly have that all called into question and even worse to be seen that that's utterly untrue. Here's where this uh, what's left of our belief system is really struggling, really struggling, because uh, you might be able to kind of recognize inside that maybe our whole reason for going to work, for raising a family, for um, pursuing any hobbies that we have, for wanting awakening, is that I will feel better when I get there in that future moment, I'll be freer happier, more loving, more lovable, I'll be liked more, I'll be more successful, I'll be able to allow in abundance, I'll fill in the blank, you know, we've all got a long list uh, that of things that we will be able to receive when we get there, or experience when we get there. 
So for me, there was this um, humbling of this, uh, having to really embrace this separate sense of self that was falling apart. So like some crumbling old building that can just no longer stand because its foundations have been taken away. Um, you're not just going to let it, uh, if you can give it some love and understanding, understand why it feels so, and it feels so extraordinarily real when you're in those moments. And there's just this sense of, I've forgotten the beautiful seeing I've had. I can't even remember what that feels like currently to feel peace or joy. And um, I don't feel like I'll ever get back to that. And for me, as this progressed, it flipped to 95% of the time. And then eventually 99% of the time I was in this kind of uh, black hole of despair, pointlessness, meaninglessness. And uh, the thoughts that were running through my mind would sound, um, would give concern to anybody listening. I don't want to go on anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Those kind of thoughts were were very frequent, and only perhaps one or two percent of the time was I uh, experiencing this beautiful opening, clarity, insight, epiphanies. Everything's all right with the world. I'm perfect just as I am. All of that. So this shift over to ninety nine percent instead of fifty fifty was because I wasn't embracing. I wasn't being this loving acceptance of this. Uh, egoic sense of self that's falling apart and it's really only when I began to try to understand why it felt that way and I'd seen that it wasn't true I wasn't a separate being and I was so busy pushing it away you are not valid you are untrue you should just go away I should stop experiencing this I want this beautiful experience all of the time and I thought that by pushing it away that was the way to make that happen so what can we do you asked me, what would I advise you do is begin to lovingly embrace. Imagine someone, uh, you met this person and they, you become friends with them and uh, their belief system was very, very um, different to yours. And they were caught up in separation. They were just so completely scared of themselves, the world, everything. They felt desperately unworthy. How would you try to help them would you if they needed your comfort your compassion you wouldn't just try to push them away you would try to be there for them until they could consciously come to recognize that their belief system is what's causing them the, their issues rather than the actuality of themselves and yet we're all doing this with our uh, egoic what's left of our egoic sense of self however much that's dissolved we're all generally in resistance to it, wishing it would just go away. So for me, there was this, uh, what would the self, what would that beautiful knowing do with this despair moment when it arises? It would totally embrace it. It would totally go into it. It would totally support it, validate whatever it was feeling. Yes, the beliefs the ego uh, has are not true, but it does think they're true, right? And therefore the body feels that. Mostly our body suffers because we're trying to push that away. It's not true. It should just go away. Why is it still going on? It should just disappear. And I want to somehow shift this 99%, flip it over so that I'm 100% feeling um, only peace, love, light, and joy. But the way to that, of course, is to deeply embrace that aspect of us is still suffering, deeply embrace. What do I mean by embracing? Understanding. Everything it ever thought to be true has just been pulled out from underneath it. And there's like this small child inside each one of us that's terrified of this great big infinite self as it thinks it to be, that's going to come and annihilate it, squash it, and... Um, push it out, when really all it wants to do is be included and allowed in. So the reason for this polarity is the, what's, what's keeping these two states separate, for want of a better word, because they're not states. 
is my pushing against it. The more I push against it, the more polarized my experience becomes into two. When I welcome it, it comes back inside the greatest space of my being and um, begins to dissolve even faster. And then there was, for me, there was peace, love, joy, an absolute sense that everything is okay. And a body inside that was feeling despair, feeling fear, feeling shame, whatever it was, but it was just so gently, lovingly held by my real nature. And finally, this small child just said, I'm safe. I'm safe. I can feel there is nothing that's going to annihilate me or reject me. And it's okay that my beliefs were seen to be meaningless because here's something even better. And my remnants of my egoic sense of self found a way to kind of function as this vehicle for the self to speak through. So I absolutely get it because I spent a long time pushing against this. And it's the last thing we want to do as human beings to embrace despair, sadness, hopelessness, meaninglessness, isn't it? It's the last place we want to go, especially when we've just had a taste of peace and clarity and insight and all of that freshness and aliveness and vitality and well-being that is the real essence. But what would that real essence do with something or someone that's suffering? Would it push it away? And this is the, really the non-duality of it all. In the end, I can keep separating myself from it and living in duality. My real nature and my uh, false nature, my old way. Or I can allow this to come back inside, which is all it needs to feel loved, to feel safe. And then it begins to dissolve and disintegrate. So what would I do if I was in your position? Well, I have been, and I would run towards the worst feeling that you experience. I would run towards it. And what do I mean by run towards it? I mean, be willing to feel it. Just be willing to feel it. You don't have to like it. You're never going to like, I don't like uh, feeling fear, despair, shame still. They don't happen for me very often at all now, but um, I still don't like it. I would prefer peace. But peace comes also at the same time, love, a deep and rich compassion for that part of us that's kind of dismantled and dis uh, fragmenting inside our old sense of self. As you would for a... a um, a loving friend, an old friend that's struggling, or as you would uh, pick up a, a insect that's got turned upside down and put it back the right way up so that it can carry on. And this is what we're doing with our old sense of self. It's okay. How you feel is okay. I can't believe it anymore, but I'm also not going to make you wrong. You're, you're welcome here too. And in the space of this love, it begins to dissolve. So can you run towards it instead of away from it? Can you feel that pushing it away really isn't working? And that's actually the cause of all of our suffering here now. The real non-duality, non-dual means not two. It means these two have to come into the same. They have to, I'm going to use the word merge, but that still is suggest two into one. They have to exist in the same space at the same time. You have to welcome this as the self which is to understand to want to help to embrace to include this old sense of self rather than exclude because excluding anything becomes the whole source of pain if you are one if you're everywhere and infinite <clears throat> then anything that you're rejecting you're making two right there, me and what I'm pushing away. And I found out I was absolutely flawed. I was amazed to find out that it wasn't really my old egoic sense of self that was causing the hurt. It was simply and only the fact that I was rejecting it because that's all I knew how to do at the time. 
the moment I stopped rejecting it, and maybe you can feel this right now as I'm talking, something began to soften. The frequencies of the egoic sense of self began to lighten. There was, uh, <clears throat> and eventually it all dissolved back into peace as I allowed it back in. It was just an excess of peace and contentment, which then began to deepen into love and joy. So it might be the last thing we want to do. And usually I, I only embraced it when I had tried everything else and it didn't work. Everything else made it worse, in fact. It really has never, ever worked for any of us ever at any time in human history that pushing something away makes us feel better. We might avoid it temporarily, but we know it's coming around again. And as you said in your uh, question, just can't do that anymore. So what is, if the egoic sense of self is feeling meaningless and purposeless, what is the purpose of life then? What is the meaning behind all of this? Could it be this, to simply include what we've excluded from that greater place of our being? <clears throat> include, allow, embrace, all words for love, aren't they? If that isn't the meaning of life, then I haven't found a better one than that currently. To allow back in what we couldn't deal with as a separate sense of self, as a separate being, and allow that back into our real nature to finally come home and transmute itself into peace, love, and joy, which has always been trying to do. Despair, hopelessness, all of these very low energies are simply where it has to hang out if we're not letting it uh, change and move up through the energy system so have a feel out of that and see um if hopefully that gives you a direction forward or inward i should say to work with this <clears throat> the only thing that we're suffering from ever is the sense of two and here's where it's hanging out for you currently what i know to be true what i used to think was true and of course, you kind of want to go like that. But we tried that. It didn't work. I've never met anyone for whom that worked. And eventually we're back to what would the self do with this? What would love do with this? What would the consciousness do with this? It would just kind of allow it to exist, surrounding it, understanding it, not trying to change it. And then everything changes from there. <clears throat> 